Here we are, another edition of What Barry's Talking About from Barry 360. I'm Dan Blakely. On this week's program, more about Sasquatch and the possible existence of such in and around Simcoe County. The gang from Sasquatch University at Trent University in Peterborough has been renewed for a second season on Wild TV with new stories to tell about the creature. We flipped from summer to fall last weekend. It wasn't an overly hot summer and it may not be an overly cool fall. We get the forecast from Environment Canada Climate Climatologist David Phillips, and the Barry Colt season begins this weekend. We get a preview from our stable mate, Gene Pereira. We get the conversation started after this. The Barry Colt season gets underway this weekend with a Friday night game in Sudbury and their home opener Saturday night against the North Bay Battalion. Colts writer and broadcaster Gene Pereira joins us again this season for weekly updates, telling Barry 360's Will Conkin this will be a team to be reckoned with. There is some bad news heading into the season. Bo Gelsma will be sidelined for a bit. Uh, Gene, what, uh, what info do you have about him? Yeah, a tough break. They were playing in, a, a, I guess, in scrimmages against the Buffalo Sabres. Bo Gelsma was in camp with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and uh, he took a body check, and I think it's uh, a shoulder separation. And unfortunately, Bo is going to miss anywhere from four to eight weeks which could take him to the start of November, at the end of November, that he's going to be out. And obviously a tough break for Bo, who's trying to land a pro contract. But, you know, the good part here is that he can get healthy. Uh, you know, the timing isn't too bad, considering when it could happen. Uh, you know, at the start of the year, um, you know, first and foremost, just get him healthy and ready. And, and uh, you know, he can help the team, uh, you know, come down the stretch drive and, and the playoffs. You also wrote a piece about rookie Parker Vaughn, Barry's fifth overall pick. Sounds like he's uh, he's ready to get going. Yeah, he's just, you know, when you watch him out there, you know, and you, you forget he's a 16-year-old, obviously, one of the youngest guys in the league, but he, he seems to fit right in, and uh, you do notice him. And, you know, it's, it's not often that these first-year players can make a big impact, but, you know, Parker Vaughn, yes, was against, uh, you know, his training camp and so on, but... He has certainly fit in quite well, and you can really see a lot of the talents, his playmaking ability, and you know just his confidence when you talk to him. Uh, you know the ability to kind of perform night in and night out, and uh, you know talking to Marty Williamson said he's he's just one of those guys that really works hard. He listens to what you tell him, and and uh, you know they really uh, excited about the young uh, young forward here. What do you make of the roster overall and how it uh, stacks up in the East? Well, I think this is certainly a year that Barry is looking to be uh, one of the contenders. I mean, that Eastern Conference, that top four, is quite something. Uh, you know, when you look at it, you, you know, you got obviously uh, Brampton, uh, Oshawa, Brantford, and Barry are, I think, the top four teams and all really, you know, quality hockey clubs. And uh, I think the best teams, you know, maybe uh, aside from London, which is going to be outstanding in the West, but. Uh, this Eastern Conference is just stacked at the top of it. It's going to be fun to watch these four teams, which are all pretty good hockey clubs, battle it out. One last thing to talk about. It's the 30th anniversary of the Colts, and you were also telling me uh, they're close to a milestone in wins, eh? Yeah, they're coming up, uh, obviously, five wins from a 1,000 career franchise wins, and, you know, that's pretty exciting. Uh, it's the uh, 30th anniversary. They came out with, a, obviously, a jersey, a special jersey uh, for, uh, you know, their anniversary. And, uh, look, I mean, it, it's something I'm also going to shoot for. I mean, they got bigger plans this year. They're hoping to be a contender and so on. But, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a... a a nice notch in their belt there to get this thousandth career win. It'll be something, uh, you know, to be proud of. I mean, this team, uh, you know, over the years, they, they made the playoffs right in the very first year, which was uh, no CHL uh, expansion team had, did, uh, had done. And, uh, you know, they've had some success in the early, especially in the early years. They didn't make, uh, miss the playoffs for quite a while. But, uh, you know, it's something to, uh, to, to be proud of. And, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fun event when that, it does happen. A good start for now. Looking forward to the weekend games. Till next time, Gene. Thanks, Will.
Fall arrived last weekend after a summer with not a lot of temperature extremes, not a lot of severe weather, though it was wetter than normal in the Barrie and Simcoe County area. Had a chance to sit down with Environment Canada climatologist David Phillips on the Barrie waterfront to look back on what the summer gave us and what might be in store for the next three months. Dan, we had a pretty good summer. I mean, I thought you'd start off saying, well, you, you nailed another one. Like, you know, I was like, getting there. You were getting there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but you know what? I think anybody could, could nail it. I mean, we've just seen warm, warm, warm. I, I can't remember the last month. I think we've had over 30 months in a row uh, before, since we've had a temperature that was, say, a degree cooler than normal. Anything le- a little bit less than normal, it would just be, or it is with normal. But a degree, you, you clearly would know it. And so we have just been on a, a roll. And of course, a lot of people are thinking, oh my gosh, we're going to pay for all this gorgeous weather, that, that Newfoundland attitude, you know, hide say, under the bed. You're setting us up for something. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> but hey, another, another warm summer every month was warmer than normal, but it, was, it wasn't excruciatingly hot. We did have a um, couple of days where we got above 30 degrees. I think eight days where the temperature got above 30, but some of those were just like 30, 31. And uh, normally we'd have seven of those, so we had one more than normal. But uh, and it was wetter than normal, so the farmers were, were happy, gardeners, I mean, with a lot of green uh, out. But, you know, we had 200 millimeters less rain than Toronto did. I mean, incredible. We had in total about 300 millimeters of rain. We normally would get about 250. So it was about 30, 25% more than normal. Toronto had well over 500 millimeters of rain. And from a lot of troubles. A lot of troubles. Flooding, incredible flooding, insurance losses in the billions of dollars, a disruption of, of, of just living generally, traveling, and, and people were just, my gosh, no deaths. But honest to God, it doesn't cause deaths. It causes just in total expenses and, and disruption. And so we, we really were a charmed summer here because we had rain enough we had a couple of good doozies. I remember one, uh, uh, I, I think it was 64 um, millimeters of, of rain in, in one day. Another one, there was 41, and a couple with 20. So we didn't have a lot of days with rain. It wasn't sort of abnormally uh, wet for many days. And, um, and so, but it was when it came, it was almost if you needed it. And it, it was just, well, where do we live? Yeah, we do get thunderstorms here, and uh, but nothing like uh, Toronto. Although Toronto was very targeted. I mean, Mississauga got in one, the, the wettest day Toronto ever got. And then it downtown, it was like three millimeters of rain. So it's, and, but you know, the problem with Toronto and, and big cities is all that hard surface, the asphalt, the pavement, the building material. So it doesn't matter how dry Toronto is, a raindrop becomes a flood drop. Here we have more green area. And so it's able to with take the, the, the drench of, of rain. But boy, no, I think we had a, a splendid, I wouldn't say it was the perfect kind of a, of, of a summer, but we had a few wet weekends. But, but the last three weeks, this has been gorgeous. Oh, a gift in total. I think we've had about 25% of our rainfall in the last three weeks. We've had three days that the temperature didn't get above 20. These were kind of cool. People thought there, I think it was on the on uh, on the 7th of, of September, uh, people thought, oh, fall's here. Boy, it only got up to about uh, 14 degrees. And then we're right back into the warm, end. but dry, dry, dry. We had about maybe in three weeks, three days with wet, but nothing that you would, you might have slept through that, that kind of rain that fell. This has been perfect for the harvest. It's been perfect for just uh, people wanting to stroll and get, and we know what's coming, but hey, this is kind of like a, a gift, as I say, from nature to say, well, look, I'm just going to, this is hardly fall like, even though we, as Environment Canada, we claim that September is the first month of fall, but my gosh, the water is warmer, the air is warmer, we haven't seen any any major storms in the last three weeks. This is really, and as a senior, my gosh, my wife and I do a, a lot of traveling and, and going places. We went to Stratford and uh, this, this past week, and uh, boy, nothing but the best weather. It just It's almost delightfully boring. 
the weather. <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely day after day. It's like, you know, come on, you wake up on a Monday and you say, well, hey, let's go golfing on Thursday. Well, you can never do that here. You have to kind of wait till the day of. No, everything is just absolutely perfect. I never thought I would live to hear the day that David Phillips would find the weather boring. <laughs> well, I, I say that, you know, it, it's, I always think boring is good in weather. You don't want to be the, the headline. You don't want to be all that misery, hardship, and misfortune. You'd like to have some some quiet, so-called normal weather, like you know what our parents and grandparents t- told us that we should um, uh, we should should have. So, so overall, I think it was um, a very fine kind of um, summer. Enough rain, uh, enough warm temperatures to keep the people who love summer uh, happy. A, a couple of storms to make those who are weather weenies kind of uh, uh, pleased. Uh, but certainly we can look just not too far away and see a lot more misery that people had to put up. Oh, you had to use that word, didn't you? <laughs> we always seem to get a fall where we're up and down and back and forth, where it cools off like it did the beginning of September. And then all of a sudden it got warm again. And uh, I suspect it's going to get cool and warm up again and tease us some more. And then all of a sudden, wham. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You have it right, uh, Dan. That is really the description of fall. It is when summer wants to hold on and winter wants to get a foothold. And so often the weather changes uh, quickly, you know, uh, two days and then you're into something else and then you're back into it. So you think you get lulled into thinking, oh, it's here. And all of a sudden it comes back, like you see. So it is that kind of fickle, fitful kind of season, a little transition season. It's uh, hard to describe sometimes fall. And it also has for us uh, one of the real highlights of the whole year is the color change season. I mean, my gosh, it's not changed now. I mean, we have a few trees that change. It always does that. You know, it's it's not saying that they're early this year or late. It's clearly late. I look out across the landscape of in, in uh, Simcoe and I just don't see the, the brilliant colors, the fiery reds and the royal purples and oranges. Uh, no, it's not there yet. So it's coming, but you're right. It can come very quickly. So you have to be kind of a, uh, not a procrastinator in the fall. If you want to get out there and enjoy those things, typically this this early, this, this beginning period has been very unusual from that point of view. But uh, it, you're right. It does change on a dime and uh, you have to be flexible to be able to get out there and enjoy it. I was driving down a country road the other day and somebody already had a load of pumpkins out for people to come and take. And I'm thinking, man, it's only mid-September. Is that not early? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's sort of like the color change season. I mean, people think it's caused by the weather. It's not. It's daylight. And, and often th- that sometimes brings it, brings it on. I mean, um, now weather can kind of make it kind of progress it or, uh, you know, uh, slow it down, that kind of thing. I think what I always find that the weather factor, say in the color change season, is it, it almost produces the kind of perfect day for viewing the, the, the leaf change. You can get out there and it can be really a technicolor look, but my gosh, if you've got a, a cloud or, or cloudy or it's misty or it's, it's no fun viewing it. But it's almost like the weather provides the frame for the picture just gives you that kind of perfect look of, of what it is. And so and it's the same with the harvest. I mean, the harvest has been, um, I'm not sure, I'm not, I am don't follow the agriculture as much, but I, I certainly think that there was a lot of wet weather at times. But in the end, I think farmers were pleased by it. I'm giving a talk uh, later this, um, uh, or, or later in October, uh, to a group of farmers from Simcoe. And so I'm going to talk about what kind of a, a summer it was. And I know they will be complaining about it. Farmers always complain about the weather. There's nothing you can please farmers with. with sorry, regards sorry. To doesn't the everybody complain about well, the they, weather, they David? they do. You're right. That's a Canadian <laughs> birth. It's, it's, it's our right of, of, of existence here as Canadians. But I had a, a call the other day. Somebody said, well, this gorgeous kind of weather we have, what are the disadvantages of it? And so I had to think about that. I said, well, okay, I think people who suffer allergies um, are always want that first frost, kind of kills the growing and takes uh, a bit of the suffering that they have. And so when you have a season that is long, growing season, starts early in spring and goes late in the fall, boy, they have a tough year having to deal with their, their ailments, you say. So that certainly would be. I have met once, remember, uh, saying that we had a warm kind of fall coming up, and they said, well, fishermen complained. 
I said, it's not the greatest for for fishing. I said, all right, all right, I'm not a fisher, but I could accept that, you know, there's a, there's a reason you can, you can complain about the weather. And of course, farmers who have finished the harvest, you know, they want to get the winter wheat in. They're looking for some moisture. And, um, and, and so there, there's, there's nothing, it's never a perfect 10 with regards to the weather because everyone wants different things. And, um, and, and then also no lousy weather. There's no excuses. I can't say to my wife, well, oh, we can't go and, and do this or that because there's a range of threat, like you say. Well, no, I have not been able to use that excuse to say. <laughs> Which is why you've been busy traveling. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anything uh, extreme you see coming out of the computers and the models uh, for the fall? Well, we think what you see is what you're going to, um, to get. Uh, you're right about that transition. I mean, just because we get a, a frost, um, you know, on the pumpkin, we might get the snow. We did last year on... October 30th, nine centimeters of snow. It was a snowy uh, Halloween. Uh, we had a killing temperature before that, but that doesn't necessarily ruin it. That is what fall is about. It's a little teaser. It gives you kind of a reminder of where you live, what's coming your way. It's kind of a like a billboard for for next week's or next uh, next month's weather. And uh, but it doesn't necessarily say it's it's here. It, it's one of it's this sort of back and forth, up and down. It's, that's the kind of weather we often get. So the long stretches of kind of, of beautiful weather become shorter as you move along. And the days are getting uh, shorter. In September, really uh, interesting I found this, was that it is the one month where you lose more daylight faster than any other time of the year. We lose three minutes a day. And you can set your watch to it. You can absolutely see that, gosh, it was, it was brighter yesterday. And you think it must not be a nice sunny day. Well, give it a couple of minutes and it will be, like you say. So, so that's necessary. It's one of the, the, the unfortunate aspects uh, of it. But, um, we see fall as being an extension of kind of summer. We think it's going to be warmer and drier than normal, but not, of course, every day. I always people think they'll hear, listen to my, they think it's a weather forecast. No, no, it's a <laughs> seasonal outlook. You know, it's telling you what the personality of the season ahead is going to be. We'll see some rain. We need the rain, so don't be discouraged by that. But it's not necessarily an end to this beautiful weather that we've had. It's just been a, a kind of an interlude. In fact, what we see following that is some back into some warm. Again, it may be seasonal temperatures, and temperatures at this time of the year in Barrie and Lake Simcoe area would be a high of 18 degrees um, for the high and a low of 7. But lows, we're not even near the frost uh, uh, point. Uh, we would typically go to, we can sometimes get to Thanksgiving before we see the first frost. And I would say that because of the heat in the lakes and the, and, and the, and the land, uh, we might very go a little later than, than that. Of course, then people will begin to think, oh gosh, what is the winter going to be like? And let me, I can give you a little bit of a sneak preview. You won't hold me to this. It won't be like last year. Last year, we canceled winter. I mean, we had temperatures that were in Barrie over four degrees warmer than normal. I don't think we had, yes, we did not have a day below minus 20. We get 12 of those suckers. It was snowfall was uh, maybe only three quarters of what we normally would get. We had more rain than snow, more fog and mist. It was more like Vancouver. Well, I can tell you right now, I'll bet my pension on the fact that we won't have a repeat of that, you say. It may be warmer than normal, and our first indications are, in spite of La Nina, which has brought us some cold winters in the past, it's different now. And that is the issue of climate change. We know our seasons are different, our months are different, and, uh, and, and last year was brought to you by, yes, El Nino, warmer than normal, plus, of course, climate change warmer warmer seasons old timers tell me wherever they are in canada winters aren't what they used to be and it's not just because you walk three kilometers to school or or <laughs> or what have you or going up up hill all the way uh, but it is in fact that we know when you look at the seasons in canada we are still the great white north we're still the second coldest country in the world snowiest but we're not as not as cold as we used to be in the winter time 
And, and you see that problem that skiers have and snowboarders and ice fishers. I mean, uh, how many times that you, you can sometimes get back to back lousy kind of seasons where before it might have been one per decade or something like that. So we clearly know we're less winter like than in the uh, in the past. And so even though it's a La Nina, I think it's going to clearly going to be more of a winter than last year. Good for skiers and people who love the outdoors. And that's what people in Barry love. I mean, that's how we embrace this, the weather is that we get out and enjoy it, you say. So we may be spending more money on our home heating bills, but um, but we still have fall to go. Before we think about the hoary winter season, we have a, a fall. Now, let me also warn you about fall. When I talk about warmer than normal, I'm not talking about July warmth. You're not going to all of a sudden see people breaking out in muscle shirts and tank tops. I mean, it could be jacket weather, uh, sweater weather, um, but uh, you look at August and compare August with um, October. October is nine degrees colder than August in October. So in other words, what we call normal in October is nine degrees colder than what we would call normal in August. So that is what you always have to keep in mind. It's everything's relative to the season you're in, previous falls, this kind of thing. So overall, I think it's going to be a, a gorgeous fall. Not, um, not as I say, every day. We think the flavor of it will be that way. It's gonna kind of continue. And then we'll ease into, uh, we'll have some little teasers uh, on winter in fall. And then when the winter comes, um, my gosh, uh, it'll be time to accept that season, see it as more of a winter than last year, but people who love the winter will find it more to their liking than they did last year. Whether there's enough evidence to support the existence of Sasquatch in Ontario remains up for debate, but it's generating enough interest that Wild TV has renewed Sasquatch University for a second season. The adventures of, the findings of, a group of Sasquatch hunters from Trent University in Peterborough who say they have found evidence of Bigfoot in Simcoe County and surrounding regions. Here again is Will Conkin with the program's host, Ryan Willis. How does it feel personally to get another season? You got another green light to give this a go. Yeah, I'm. I'm been so excited about it, and it's been uh, so much fun getting to film this year. And you know, we had a, a better year, in my opinion, in the way of, of finding evidence and proving to everybody that, that Sasquatches are here in Ontario. Yeah, we managed to get some some footage on on the therm, which it was pretty cool. So I'm excited for people to see that. Um, in season two, and, and yeah, we, we went all over. We, we really kind of dedicated our time this year to uh, getting out in the woods more and spending more time in the field because I thought, you know, last season we, we did a really great job of talking to a lot of witnesses and people that, that have seen things and had encounters. But, you know, at the same time, that only gets you so far. The only way you're really going to go and, and have success finding a Sasquatch is by getting out in the field and, and spending most of your time looking. And that's really what we tried to focus on more this year. What was the reception around the first season? I guess, did, did a lot of people see it and then reach out to you of, of they've had encounters or uh, possible sightings? Yeah, I, I, it was really exciting. I, I think it had a real snowball effect where a lot of people, uh, you know, went and watched the show and, and heard about it. And they went on and, and checked out uh, what we were doing, and, and a lot of people reached out and, and you know said, "I saw this. I, I had this encounter," and, and it, you know it really kind of snowballs in terms of us getting to, to know people and really do a great job of keeping track of all the reports going in on in Ontario. Um, you know, it really helps when you're trying to find a bigfoot uh, when everyone knows that that you know you're the people to reach out to. So we, so we get just so many people reaching out with with evidence and, and different sightings and things. So it really helps us know where to look and, and what's going on. Is there a theme kind of to this season? Is it different than the first, or is it just uh, building upon the first season? I definitely say it's different from the first, but uh, I think it definitely builds off of the first season as well. You know, it's it's definitely different. It's a lot more uh, time in the field, us looking that much harder than, than in season one. And, yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we took some time to – a few episodes to investigate the paranormal side of uh, Sasquatch encounters and Sasquatch, um, you know, activity. And we spent a few others doing it kind of the, the more uh, mainstream, old-fashioned way 
of looking for Bigfoot. So, yeah, we, we brought out psychic mediums with us. Um, you know, we did all sorts of things in, in the different episodes to uh, to try to, to find a Sasquatch. And, uh, yeah, we, we managed to get, you know, that, that video I mentioned. So I'm super pumped for people to see that. Yeah, so I think I think this season is just going to be that much more uh, interesting for everybody and, and really kind of uh, change people's opinions or preconceived notions, I guess you could say, about, you know, are there Sasquatches here? I think they'll watch our show and, and by the end uh, believe that, you know, they're, they are here. Are you able to uh, give us any hints at all or anything or, or disclose anything of any of the discoveries you made? Or do we have to wait and watch? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we went out uh, on one of our investigations and managed to capture something on the, the thermal imager. Yeah, and it was, you know, definitely bipedal moving through the woods. It was pretty cool. It was uh, pretty freaky, too, because whenever something does happen out there, it, it definitely, even for us, it still spooks us. So, yeah, it was it was pretty pretty crazy. I'm excited uh, for everyone to, to check that out and, you know, hear people's opinions on it because it was, you know, freaky for sure. But it, it's so, I guess, more interesting when something like that does happen. And it really kind of, you know, for me personally, keeps, uh, keeps my faith in, in what we're doing, you know, that much stronger. Yeah, I know a lot of people, uh, if they kind of know that maybe something is in their area, then it kind of gets them more excited. Uh, what areas were you in this season? Was there? Uh, did you come up to Simcoe County at all? Yes, yeah, some of the areas we went to were uh, the Muskoka region, Algonquins, uh, further north, you know, up, up near North Bay Way. And, uh, yeah, Simcoe region, out past Collingwood, you know, southwestern Ontario, what is it, Algonquin Highlands. Uh, Minden area, Peterborough region, Corthel Lake. So, so we really went all over. And yeah, it was just such a great time getting to, to go back to all these places. A lot of them we, we did get to check out in season one, but we went to a lot of new places within those areas where for the past year more evidence has come in. Um, and we managed to get this video um, of near Algonquin Highlands region. But, um, yeah, we, we've been to so many other places this season, too. And, yeah, you know, it wasn't the only uh, interesting thing we, we came across. So, you know, all these areas um, have a lot going on and, and more and more evidence. You know, the more people we talk to and, and doing the show comes in. So, in my opinion, Sasquatch is in all these places I've, I've just named. And, yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited for people to, to check out season two and see what's going on in their area. Last time we talked, you were describing the equipment you used in Season 1. Have you added anything new to your arsenal? Yeah, yeah, therms. Uh, you know, we, we had some drones last season, but we're uh, excited to get more drones this year. I guess just, just different types of high-powered flashlights and things, therms. But, the, you know, I think the coolest new piece we got, we, we did get some some serious upgrades this year. We got, um, the, it's called a parabolic mic, and um, it, it's really cool. You can hear, uh, you know, noises coming from, from 500 feet away that are, you know, if you're just talking at a normal volume, we can point that thing, listen, and, and hear what's happening very far away from us. So that really helps when we're trying to listen for, you know, Sasquatch chatter or, or howls that, that might be happening out of our own hearing range, but we can, you know, whip out the dish and, uh, and, and, and kind of amplify our, our hearing. So it's, it's really, really cool. When does it air and how can people watch it? September 30th at uh, 5.30 um, on the Wild TV channel. And, um, yeah, you, you just go to your TV provider and uh, ask for Wild TV, and there's also Wild TV Plus online. Um, either one of those uh, is the best way to, to figure out yeah, how, how you can watch the show. And if you've seen anything or, or had an encounter and want to reach out to us, just go to our website, SasquatchUniversity.com, and, and you can figure out how to get in touch with us there. And that's our program for this week. Thanks to Will for his input, to Matt Ladder for his technical expertise, and to you for listening. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to what Barry's talking about, rate it, review it. You can also keep up with what Barry's talking about on X at Barry360, on our website, barry360.com, and there's our daily Kickstart podcast available from any streaming service and on our website. I'm Dan Blakely. Hope you'll join us again next week.